What's going on? Vincent Rapsardi, BigBlueUnbiased.com. Thank you for those who have liked, commented, and subscribed. I really appreciate you guys. I'm going to try and do videos as often as possible, maybe every single day. And I'm specifically going to bring an analytic perspective because I feel like football hasn't truly embraced that. So I want to talk about that. But let me first start with Daniel Jones. So Daniel Jones, over the offseason, he bulked up, stronger, looks like a true franchise quarterback. And this situation is obviously crazy with COVID-19, and there's nothing to truly compare it to. But I look back uh, to 2011, the NFL lockout, and how that affected teams and players, and it looked like it negatively affected defenses. And it looked like it had a positive effect on quarterbacks, obviously. That year, three quarterbacks threw for at least 5,000 yards. Eli almost threw for 5,000, so he almost had four. Aaron Rodgers had his best season as a pro, won the MVP. So it definitely worked in the favor of quarterbacks. Good quarterbacks, they seem to excel uh, during that 2011 lockout season where there wasn't as much time together as a team, the offseason stuff, and all that. So this is somewhat similar, especially with no preseason games going on. Um, so it will be interesting to see if that is true this year. So I'm thinking that maybe that could have a positive this maybe could have a positive effect in terms of no preseason and offseason stuff being a little bit scrambled around. Maybe it could have a positive effect on quarterbacks like it did back in 2011. So let's talk about Jason Garrett. I did a video on Jason Garrett on YouTube a couple months ago, the impact that he could have on the Giants offense, what he brings to the Giants offense. Um, I think this was the best move the Giants made all offseason in terms of the overall impact that it's going to have on their most important player which is obviously quarterback Daniel Jones. And we look at Jason Garrett's offense, a quarterback kind of looks deep to short, looking for big plays down the field. If you look at last season, Dak Prescott was sixth among quarterbacks in average intended air yards. So he was on average throwing the football down the field, which I think plays more to who Daniel Jones is as a quarterback. And I think that he fits Jason Garrett's style of offense a little bit more than Pat Shermer's style of offense. And I think in general... Daniel Jones is not a Drew Brees, Tom Brady kind of quarterback who's looking at a lot of short passes and being precise and perfectly accurate. I think Daniel Jones is really similar to Eli Manning. Not mobile-wise. If you look at Daniel Jones, he was sixth among quarterbacks in rushing EPA. EPA is a cumulative stat, so only played 12 games. That's pretty good. He's a very efficient running quarterback, Daniel Jones. But aside from the, the rushing thing, him and Eli are very similar in terms of making big plays downfield. Last year, Jones was second among quarterbacks in touchdown passes that traveled at least 20 yards through the air. At one point, he led quarterbacks um, in on-target percentage of throws that traveled at least 20-plus yards through the air. So he's a pretty good deep ball quarterback. He can throw the football down the field. And my thing is with quarterbacks, I like quarterbacks to take risks. You look at Eli Manning, right? Let's look at Eli's career. Two biggest plays of his career. Pretty risky plays, right? David Tyree, Mario Manningham, those plays could have easily been intercepted and it would have changed the course of Super Bowl history. But he took those risks and look at the positive impact uh, that those plays had. Now, Eli threw many interceptions in his career, right? But he also made big plays like that because he took risks and he threw the football down the field. So I Personally, I like a quarterback who makes big plays. And overall, look, the numbers don't lie. Quarterbacks who average more yards per attempt are normally better quarterbacks, right? They're good quarterbacks. Good, good quarterbacks average more yards per attempt. That's just kind of how it goes. So if you can make plays down the field consistently, that's important. Now, Jason Garrett is not only the most important acquisition because of his impact on Daniel Jones, good or bad uh, potential impact, but he's the best, in my opinion, because of his development of quarterbacks. Now, we know about Tony Romo and his career. But let's look at Dak Prescott, the most recent example. Dak Prescott was a fourth-round pick, okay? And in the NFL, quarterbacks get overdrafted. So the, the idea that Dak Prescott went to the fourth round, took until the fourth round for a team to take him, that means that nobody thought he was actually going to be a franchise quarterback. And he turned out to be one. He's a good player. Third among quarterbacks in EPA last year. Third in completed air yards. He's a good player. He can throw the football downfield, extend plays, mobile. He's a franchise quarterback, even if Giants fans don't want to admit it because, well, they hate the Cowboys. But he's a good player, and you have to give some credit to Jason Garrett on the development of a fourth-round quarterback. You just have to. It was Jason Garrett's offense. Even if Kellen Moore was calling plays, it was Jason Garrett's offense. So I think you have to be impressed with uh, you know the hire of Jason Garrett. I know that. Again, the stigma of him being a former Cowboys coach, 8-8, eight and eight. oh, he was such a bad head coach. Okay, but he's an offensive coordinator, and he's a good offensive coordinator. So I think that this was a great hire by the Giants. 
and overall, I think it will have a positive impact on Daniel Jones. So that's all I got. Vincent Rapsardi, Big Blue on Bias.com. Thank you for watching. Follow me on Twitter at Vincent Rapsardi. I have a podcast in the description below. Um, again, if you could subscribe, I would really appreciate it. Thanks again, Vincent Rapsardi, Big Blue on Bias.com.